Hi all, welcome to Busy Coder Academy. In one of the last video, we have seen uh, the JDBC CRUD application, but uh, that is without uh, Spring Framework. So let me see what is the application we have. We have a product DAO, right? Product DAO implementation. And uh, don't worry, I will attach uh, the link of that video where I discuss about JDBC without Spring Framework, right? So let me continue. So we have product DAO, that is a DAO implementation. We have DTO, that is uh, what product class. So this is a very simple CRUD application, which is consisting of get all product, add product, get by ID, delete product, update product, right? So these are routine operations, right? But you see, there, there's no spring framework into this uh, application. So what is the disadvantage? We discuss one by one, okay? So that is the product service. And this is the product service implementation, right? We are simply creating the object inside the constructor of product service. Okay, so right now it's okay that we have only one implementation of a product DAO, let's say that is JDBC. But what happened, let's assume that we also have a Hibernate implementation, right? So again, the code has to be changed, uh, right? So another important problem is that we have created our own connection factory, right? Uh, let me show you. So we are simply loading the property file uh, from the class path. Uh, you know, uh, it is not a good programming practice to hard code the connection details. So that's why we have uh, loaded the value from the property file and I'm loading the driver and getting the connection object. That connection object was used into the DAO layer. You see, that connection was object in the DAO, used in the DAO layer. And then what is happening? I'm simply uh, writing uh, the code to get all the products, right? We are simply saying while RS does next and uh, we are uh, getting all the product, putting into the list and returning, right? But I'm also using here throws as well exception, right? One good programming practice about MVC is that you should use throws into model layer, right? Okay, why you can explore it on from, st from Stack Overflow, you will get the answer, right? So you should uh, not catch the exception in model layer, you should use throws, okay? Uh, so I'm using here throws as well exception. But one problem is that uh, if you change the technology, right? Uh, JDBC use as well exception, but Hibernate use Hibernate exception. So you have to change the signature of your uh, DAO layer, which is not a great thing. Right, because service layer depending on DAO layer, and whenever you change the signature of DAO layer, service layer have to change the code. Right? Why help the service layer have to change the code? This is not a good thing. So, in fact, you should not uh, use the SQL exception. Right? You can say, okay, then I should use here Hibernate exception. But again, if you start using another technology, let's say MongoDB, MongoDB don't throw the Hibernate exception. It might be throwing some MongoDB exception. Right? It doesn't make sense. So you say, okay, ma, I know something about exception wrapping. Right? So you can use exception wrapping. While you should use exception wrapping yourself. Right? Uh, we have Spring JDBC, which can provide it. Right? So I'm just trying to tell you what is the problem if you're not using Spring framework here. So what is my plan? I will use here Spring JDBC to simplify this code, right? But first of all, I need to tell you what is the problem with this code. That's why we are just counting the problem, right? The other important thing is that you don't have uh, the transaction management uh, uh, done uh, done automatically, right? You need to do manual transaction management. If you know Spring can provide you uh, the declarative transaction management thanks to one annotation that is called at the rate transactional. But I'm not using here. So I'm using transaction management in DAO layer. Uh, that is explicit. Uh, so that's not a good thing. Right. But this is how you say connection dot set to commit equal to false. Right. That means if everything goes well, you say commit. Otherwise, you roll back. Right. Same thing we did into delete and update. Right. I'm not done in update, but you can think about it. So now let's see some presentation to understand some basic stuff. Right. So if you see that, what is the pain point of JDBC, right? So pain point of JDBC is that what you need to do, you need to define a connection, you need to access the data source, begin a transaction, specify the XL statement, declare the parameter, prepare and execute the statement, and set up the loop to trade it. And then you have to execute the things and roll back, and then you have to close the connections, right? So much code you have to do. So much of the this code is boilerplate code, you come to know in a few minutes, right? Okay, so that is the code snippet which is trying to suggest you that you are opening the connection, then trying, and then you are writing finally. Although I've not done it, it is also a, a good programming practice. You should close the connection, but you have to write lots of code in the finally block. So only one or two line of code is useful, right? You just need to say statement dot execute query, okay? And then you need to retrieve the record and give it back to the user. But you have too much boilerplate code, right? So what is boilerplate code? Boilerplate code refer to a code which is repeated again and again, right? Okay, with no alteration. So you don't have to write boilerplate code yourself. Spring can provide you helpful way of doing it, right? So as compared to plain vanilla JDBC, Spring have many important advantages, right? So Spring provide you something called JDBC template. So what is JDBC template? A beautiful implementation of template design pattern. Template is one of the uh, one of the important gang of our design pattern. Okay, we we'll discuss about it in a separate playlist on design pattern, right? 
So if you see that, uh, I can give a layman idea about uh, this uh, <clears throat> uh, design pattern, right? That is called template design pattern. If I ask you, let's say, uh, if I'm taking your training physically, so uh, what is happening? I do have two options. I want to take your uh, uh, feedback from you people, how the training goes, right? So I can give you a four paper sheet or I can give you a training form. What is more easier for you? Obviously, this training form, right? You know what you need to fill. So actually, you can say that this training form acts as a template, right? So template is a design pattern, which is a wonderful design pattern from Gang of Four, which can simplify your code, actually. Okay. So if you have not understood much, at least you can see here, See, compare this code, this much code with this code. If you apply the template design pattern correctly, you have to write minimum code. That is what my intention. Okay. What else Spring Framework does? Spring JDBC does. So as I told you, the Spring JDBC provide you a kind of temp uh, template, right? The provide template, you just need to define your callbacks actually. So what are the callbacks? Callbacks are the method which is carved by the framework, right? Okay. So we have uh, row mapper uh, is one of the very famous example of callbacks which we use in JDBC, right? I will show you more examples further on. So what we need to do? We need to actually, uh, uh, we need to just define the callback. What SQL query we not we need to execute, right? And Spring JDBC do rest of the work uh, to stabilize the connection, begin the transaction. Okay, Spring use declarative transaction management. We don't have to start ourselves. We don't have to commit and roll back ourselves if something goes bad, right? Closing the connection is not my job. All these responsibilities are uh, taken by the Spring JDBC, okay? <clears throat> the other advantage of Spring JDBC is exception hierarchy, uh, exception handling, right? I mean to say. So what do you mean by exception, uh, access exception hierarchy, which is mentioned here? So as I told you, if you are using JDBC, you have to handle SQL exception. If you are using Hibernate, you have to use Hibernate exception. And you are using throws into your uh, DAO layer. Okay, and service layer knows that which technology you are using. That is not good because your DAO layer should be technology agnostic, right? So Spring uh, JDBC provides you wonderful uh, hierarchy of exception, right? And moreover, SQL exception is checked exception. So uh, checked exception are very uh, chatty. You need to uh, put throws and then you have to try catch, right? So what uh, Spring JDBC have done, uh, Spring JDBC have converted that checked exception to hierarchy of unchecked exception. Okay, so you can have runtime uh, exception, which is uh, uh, which is the root exception here, and then data access exception Spring have created. <coughs> Sorry, so data access exception, which can uh, which is extended from runtime exception, and we have uh, overall uh, hierarchy here, right? Data access uh, resource exception, resource failure exception, cleanup failure data access exception. Optimize uh, optimistic locking failure exception. So what it means actually, like data integrity wallet. So these are all subclasses of data access exception. So now whether we use Hibernate or DAO uh, in, with the JDBC, we don't have to write our own wrappers, right? Okay, Spring JDBC provide you a wonderful wrapper that is called data access exception, right? So it automatically wraps the exception uh, whenever happens in your DAO layer. So don't have to write your own wrapper. What else? Uh, was, uh, you, you can do configuration by using, uh, if you want to configure Spring with JDBC, of course, you have to do configuration. So you can use XML, but nowadays people are preparing Java configuration, right? So I will not show you this uh, uh, XML configuration. If you need it, you let me know. I will show you, uh, by the way, Java configuration. That is very much required nowadays, right? Okay. So that is what I'm trying to say. The code which you see here is simplified like this, okay? So let me go to the code sample, how we can get started here. So step number one, uh, let me make a copy of this actually. Okay, all this code sample would be there in the GitHub repository. I will share the link into uh, the video so that you can refer, right? Let's say with, with Spring. Spring Java config, right? So you can use XML configuration, Java configuration, XML Java configuration, but nowadays Java configuration is more popular. Okay, so what is the first step? First step is that you need to mention that dependency, right? Okay, so it is a Maven project. So what I will do, I will mention the dependency. So I'm giving the minimum dependency that is called Spring Context and Spring JDBC. Okay, so I think that should be enough. And I don't want to mention version like this. So I want to say here Spring. So now let me copy this spelling. 
because if you have to change the version, you don't have you don't want to write at uh, hundred of places, right? That's why we are giving this uh, tag actually. Okay, so now what I need to do, I need to say here Maven update. Let's see. Okay, so hopefully this project have the dependency related to Spring and JDBC, right? And TX. Okay, so whenever you put this uh, Spring uh, JDBC dependency, it uh, pull the uh, transaction dependency, uh, which is a transitive dependency with the Maven, right? Okay, so let me try to create a package that is called config right so now what i need to do i need to write a class here that is called app config okay so what i need to do i need to write a configuration right so basically what we want to do we want to integrate spring with jdbc okay so spring will simplify jdbc and reduce lots of wireless platform so first because we are writing java configuration we need to say here hey this is a configuration class Okay, and then we need to write component scan, which is a very important annotation. And actually, all these root package are started from com.product app. So can I do one thing? Let me copy this spelling and paste it here. Okay, so now I can say her base package. Base packages is equal to like this. So in one of the video, we have discussed in detail what is Java configuration, XML configuration. So you can refer that. Okay. So one important thing, if you want to have declarative transaction management support, you need to say here, enable transaction manager, enable transaction management. Okay, that is one of the video. Now, I want to read the property file. You see that I do have a database property file with the name called db.property. Okay, so what I want to do, I don't want to hard code the connection detail, I want to read this property file. So what you can do here, you can create, you can write an annotation which is used to load that property file. So that is called property source. Okay, so in the property source, you can write here class path, okay, because you want to load this file from class path. Okay, so db dot, db dot properties. Right, so that is what the way you do this actually, right? So other thing, important thing is that what I can do here, I can say here private environment. So what is environment? Environment is a way to pick the values from the property file, right? There are multiple ways actually, right? Uh, but let me use the simplest way. And <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> an environment cannot only pull uh, pull the dependence, uh, the information from property file. It can also use to inject the values, uh, for example, uh, JDK version information, other with, uh, information from your computer, right? Okay. So what I can do here, I can say at the rate auto -y. So what is going to happen if I do like this? When Spring is reading this configuration, I mean to say property file, db property, it separates the key and value and populate into this environment. So I will use this environment to configure the data source. Okay. So what is happening in this application? I have created my own connection factory. Okay. Which is not so good actually, right? There's no guarantee it is properly singleton. And uh, moreover, we are getting only one connection. Okay. So there's another concept that is called connection pool, right? So if you want to use connection pool, you have to write more code, right? But if you're using Spring, you are more lucky. You can simply configure something called uh, <clears throat> driver manager data source. Even you can configure some other connection pool like DBCP and other connection pool. But let me start with something that is called data source transaction. Data source, uh, data source actually, right? Okay, so uh, that is called driver manager data source, driver manager. manager data source okay so public driver manager data source right so let me say here get driver manager data source the name of this method could be anything okay so now what i can say here driver manager data source is equal to new driver manager data source and ds dot set username okay i need to give some values here okay i will come back to this ds dot set password set password so i can say here environment dot get property okay get property uh, what is the meaning of it uh, just hold down i will explain everything okay so now what i need to say here ds dot what set driver class name environment dot get property
URL get property, right? So now what I need to do, I finally want to return here, return TS, right? So I'm simply returning data source. So here, what I need to do, I need to write the annotation at the red right D. Okay. So now what I what it means actually, you are simply configuring Spring with JDBC actually. And I'm not using XML configuration because uh, you should focus more on Java configuration nowadays, right? Okay. So that is the one thing. Uh, now you need to configure something called JDBC template. Okay. So Spring JDBC template is very, very important. JDBC template, which is a very good example of template design pattern. So let me use this here. Okay. The name of this method could be anything. Okay, so let's say return template. That is one thing. But the JDBC template required data source actually, right? So I can say here data source, data source. Okay, please remember this data source should come from which package? Let's see, uh, it should come from javax.sql, right? Okay, so what we need to do now, we have configured this JDBC template and uh, in this JDBC template, we need to pass data source. Okay, so let me also write this as a team. Okay, so we have uh, configured the driver manager data source. We have configured JDBC template. The last but not the least, what we need to do, we need to configure data, uh, data source transaction manager. Okay, so Spring don't do transaction management itself. Okay, I will make a separate video on transaction management in detail to understand how Spring helps us to manage the transaction management declarative, declaratively by, by using a technique that is called AOP. Okay, but uh, for configuration purpose, you need to configure something called data source transaction manager, right? Let me configure this public data source transaction manager, right? Okay, so now let me define a method with the name get data source transaction manager, right? The name of these methods are not important because we don't use it directly, but otherwise the bean name would be like this, okay? There's the bean name with which Spring container will register this drive, uh, data source transaction manager, right? But you don't have to think too much about it. Okay, so let's say return txmgl. So now I need to apply here bean also. But actually this uh, data source transaction manager uh, will also require data source, okay? So let me copy this and let me pass it. So this is the configuration actually, right? So how this configuration is working, let me try to do a kind of dry run for you so that it's easier for you to understand. Okay. So now, let's say we have uh, this actually, right? Let me reduce the font a little bit. So what is happening here? <clears throat> so if you see here, uh, what we are saying uh, in this configuration, we are saying that this app config is the name of configuration class. We are configuring here JDBC template. We are configuring here driver manager data source. And we are configuring here data source transaction manager. Okay. So what is happening here? If you try to visualize here, this is the configuration class. Now inside it, we are saying data source. From where this data source is coming? So Spring, uh, uh, when we do Java configuration, Spring understands, oh, this is a bean which is configured. Driver manager data source and driver manager data source is a kind of data source. So what is happening? The Spring framework inject this bean here. Actually, same thing happens here when you pass the argument data source. So same bean is injected here. Okay, so Spring will manage it. You don't have to say any auto wire annotation here. Spring automatically manages it, and that's how you configure driver uh, data source transaction manager and you configure JDBC template. Okay, so now this is the configuration we did here. Now question is that. We don't want to use the hard-coded configuration which we did earlier. Okay, so now what I will do, I will apply here at the rate repository. Okay, and here in this, what I need to do, I need to apply at the rate server. 
Okay. So here, I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to hard code the value. I want that it should be construct injected, right? So I can say here, uh, source constructor using field. Okay. So I'm just keep providing a parameterized constructor and over this parameterized constructor, I can say auto value. Okay. Although in new version of Spring, if you have only one constructor, then you don't have to write at the rate auto value. Okay. But just writing it for more clarity. So let's say this is one implementation. I say here rename. Okay, let's say without. Okay, or let me let me do one thing. I should uh, refactor it because we already have a copy of this without string, right? So you can refer that. So what I want to do in this code, I don't want to do this hard coding actually. Even I don't want to use connection, right? Okay, so what I can do here, I can say here private. <clears throat> JDBC template. Okay, so JDBC template we have already configured. JDBC template. Now we have enough right to auto wire this. Okay. So what I will do here, I will say here at the rate auto wire. So what is going to happen? Spring framework will now inject this JDBC template. Now I can use JDBC template to write this code. See, I don't have to write this much code actually. And now there's no need of saying throws SQL exception, right? We don't need to write our own exception wrappers and all those things, right? This is not required. So let me remove this here from here. And what I can do here from this also, I'm just removing it. Okay. So we'll discuss more about exception translation in detail in one of the video. Otherwise, it become very lengthy, right? So now what is going to happen? I'm not saying that <clears throat> it throws the exception. Okay, so because there's some compilation error, I will come back to this later on, right? So what I want to do here, I don't want to write this much code actually, right? So I can say that JDBC template provide me a wonderful way actually, right? Okay, so what I can do here, JDBC template provide me some methods, okay? So I can say here JDBC template that is called what? Query for, or I can simply say query for, Query, query, right? There's there's a query for list, query for object. You can use simple method query for now. Okay. So what I can do here, I can write the query. Okay. So se select a stick from what let's say product, right? And then what you need to do, you need to provide row mapper. Now, what is row mapper? It's a kind of callback. But why you need it actually? You see, uh, what is the real advantage of Spring JDBC? The real advantage of Spring JDBC is that it helps us to reduce the boilerplate code, right? So <clears throat> If you see here, what I will do, I will define my callback. So one of the callback is row mapper. Okay, so stabilizing the connection, beginning a transaction, okay, and uh, executing any SQL queries, submitting and rollback and closing the connection. Everything is managed by Spring. But I just need to provide my callback. I just need to provide my query. And uh, because, you know, you are asking a Spring framework to give all the product actually. So uh, what do you expect actually? It will hit the database, but in database we have tuples, but how to convert that tuple into an object, right? Okay, we are not using Hibernate. So we need to define something called row mapper. Okay, let me show you. It's more easier when I write the code. Okay, so I will write a class that is called what? Product. Private uh, product row mapper. Okay, so implement, let's say row mapper. So row mapper is an interface. You should choose this from Spring Framework. Okay. And then I will write the name of Pojo. Okay. So you can use Java 8 also. In fact, uh, use the Lambda syntax to simplify this, right? Okay. So what I need to do, I do have RS. Okay. This give me number of rows actually. So they have different kind of uh, mappers, right? Uh, let me start the basic idea first. So what I need to do, I need to return the object actually. So I can say her new product. Okay, so now this RS have this data actually. So I can say here dot get int. Okay, that is the first column. I can say here here RS dot get string. Okay, get string. That is what second column, and RS dot get double third. Right, so that is the third column. So I have created this product row mapper. Now what I can do here, I can simply come here and And this down here, I can simply say like this. 
So you have actually one line of code. Even you can simplify this, right? Let me write uh, in one line of code. I can simply say like this, okay? That should also work, right? So see how simplified Spring JDBC uh, make the things actually, right? So now you see that what we are doing actually, we are uh, uh, we are saying that add product actually. This is the code we have to do. Okay, so how to simplify this code actually, right? You don't have to say this much actually, right? What you can say? You can simply use JDBC template. Okay, so I can say here JDBC template dot what update. Okay, so we have many kind of update actually. We have batch update also, which we see separately in a separate video. But what I want to do, I want to insert the value actually. Okay, so I can say here insert into product product okay and what is the value i want to inject insert actually i want to insert name let's see what are the value we have okay select okay mysql let me log into mysql okay so use youtube okay youtube is the name of database unknown database youtube right let's see what is that youtube db Okay, so let me use it. Use YouTube. Okay, show tables. <clears throat> okay, select a stack from product. Okay, so that is the table actually, right? We have a name and price. Okay, so I forget the name of column. That's why I was looking here. So insert into name and price. values right so you need to give question mark so these are the placeholder so how you set the placeholder so there's a way to uh, set the placeholder you need to provide the array of object actually okay so now we need to provide this so what is the first member we have we have to send name so i can say here product dot get name okay product dot get price okay so that is how you can write this code actually. We can also get the generated ID key. There's a different way. I will discuss in one of the other videos. Okay. So now what I need to do, I need to get by ID. Okay. So if you think about query, so query will give you list actually. If you simply say query for object, it will give you one object, right? So how to use it? Let me show you. So I don't have to write this much actually, right? I can simplify this. So I can say here query for object. Query for object. So in query for object, we fire the query and I say here select a stick from product where what? ID is equal to question mark, right? So this is the placeholder. If you have only one placeholder, you don't have to convert into array of object as we did in uh, last, this example. So you can simply pass the ID like this. Okay, so that will also work. In delete, so please remember, so whenever you are uh, doing these CRUD operations like delete, okay, insert or update, you have only one method to use that is called update, right? So that is what simple thing we need to remember. Now what we need to do, we need to delete the product actually. Okay, so what I need to do here, I don't have to return anything. So I simply say here delete from product where ID is equal to question mark. So you just need to pass the query and call back, nothing special actually, right? And if you have only one parameter, I don't think we need to pass like this. We can simply say like this, okay? So I don't have to return anything, so I will do this. You see that, compare the number of lines of code. It's very much simplified. <clears throat> Similarly, I want to do what I want to update. So again, uh, for update, uh, the same query update will work, right? So now what I need to do, I need to set uh, the parameter. If you need to set more than one parameter, you need to pass them at the array of object actually, right? So what I can do here, I can say that I do have two parameters. Okay, so I do have these two parameters. One is uh, the price and the ID actually, right? So I can say that ID and price. In fact, price first and then ID. Okay, please maintain the order. So now I can delete it. So that is what the basic idea about Spring JDBC, right? 
So Spring JDBC provide you JDBC template, which is a kind of implementation of template design by them. Okay, I will make a separate videos on design by them. Uh, it will help you to understand this uh, design pattern terms better, right? Okay, design patterns are very, very important. Now, in this service there, you see, I have never started the transaction, never have committed the transaction anywhere. Else. Because I have already configured the uh, transactions declaratively in Java configuration. I say here, enable transaction management. So what if I need to activate the transaction management, it's a cross-cutting concern. It should be done in service there, right? So you can say here at the rate transactional. Okay. So please remember at the rate transactional must come from spring framework. Okay. So it has many parameters actually. We don't discuss it right now. Like isolation level, propagation, rollback policies, timeout, right? So you simply apply at the rate transaction and default configuration return. Now inside this main, actually, uh, what I need to do, I don't have to say like this. We need to use Spring Framework actually. Okay, and because I'm using Java configuration, so I need to use annotation config application context. And what I can say here, I can create the object of this class, right? And then I pass here app config dot class, app config dot class, right? So what I need to do now, I need to say here product service context dot get the Okay, so I will ask Spring Framework to give me the mean. But have I registered that mean? Yes. Because in service layer, I put the annotation service. So the name of bean would be product service ample. I don't want this name, actually. So I want another name. So I can say here product service. So whatever name you want, you give it here. Okay, so Spring Framework will register the bean with this name, actually. Now I ask Spring Framework to give me that bean simply, right? So you can apply typecasting, you must actually. And then what we are getting, we are getting the list of product actually, right? So what I can do here, I don't need this. Okay, so now what I want, I simply want to print it. Okay, so let me try to run this much actually and see whether this much is working or not. Product service dot class, right? That is how you type cast. So let me try to run this. Okay, so I'm getting some error. What it is saying that <clears throat> property driver class must not be empty. Okay, so my bad, what I did here, I have configured this, but I have never supplied these values actually, right? So environment dot get property, but what, which property? Okay, so I need to refer it correctly. So this is the spelling. So you refer the key and it will pick the value, right? So that was the problem with the configuration. So driver name, Okay, so in the place of driver name, give the driver name. So we need to have this actually. Okay. So then we have username and password. Okay, so I'm copying the spelling because I don't want to waste my and your time, right? Uh, so you simply put it from, pick it from here. This is username and let me write here password. Password. Okay, and for this URL, I need to say here JDBC URL. Okay, so hopefully this should work, right? Let me try to run this. And you see the products are coming from the database using Spring JDBC, right? Okay, so now other things you can also try. Okay, so in this service layer, what I did here, a product is not found. I am throwing the exception product is not there. Okay, so let me try this method also. So what do we want to do? Product service dot get by ID. Okay, so we are trying to get a product which is not there. <clears throat> so it should fail and it should give me the exception that is called incorrect result size. Okay, so it's not exactly giving me that value that uh, product is not found. It is giving me empty result data access exception, right? Okay, so but let's say what is happening, I'm running it with a product which is there. Okay, so I think product ID one is there. Let me try to run this and this product should be found. Okay. So saying that get a particular product, incorrect result size expected one actual is zero. Okay, so so we have product that is seven and eight. Okay, not the one. Okay, so let me write here seven. Okay, so this product is there and we will find it. Okay, very good. So what I want to do now, I want to apply the other methods. Right, let me comment it. So now what I want, I want to add a product. Okay, so now I'm saying pen set, right? Let's assume the price is 300. Okay, so now let me 
the product service dot add product. So what is my expectation? Pen set should be added. Okay. So now what is happening? This is giving me ID equal to zero. Uh, the question is that how to get auto generated ID back uh, by using Spring JDBC. I will discuss in next video. Right. It becomes lengthy, but you try to understand the product was added to the database. Right. So let's see what we want to do now. We want to update the product actually. Right. So let's say the pen set have ID, no, what is the ID of the pen set? Uh, record the nine, right? So let me say nine and 400. It means that we have a pen set where the ID was nine and the price changes to 400. Okay, so now if I run it, what is going to happen? Right, so now it is printing from this actually. Okay, so now if I run it, so just consider you have two pen set because uh, I forgot to comment this, but you understand that pen set was ID was nine was uh, earlier 300 now is changed to 400. Okay. So now this is the way you can convert uh, and easily migrate from a application, which is not using um, the spring framework with the spring JDBC configuration. Right. Okay. So that is the idea about it. So thank you guys. So please share and subscribe this YouTube channel and uh, uh, try to run the code because once you run the code, you understand the basic, uh, more uh, more fundamental and more deeper sense actually. Okay, so in next videos, we'll discuss about how to fetch the autogenic IDs and I will discuss more about transaction management and other features, right? So bye for now, take care.